So welcome back. Now in the previous part of this lesson, we have discussed that every tool has a purpose and the tool is neither right nor wrong. The person using the tool has to use the tool in the right manner and that we discussed in context with the options, isn't it? And we have discussed that the OTM options or the out of the money options, they are meant for limiting your losses on your futures position or your portfolios. But if you buy them naked, Hoping that by paying a very small premium and taking a very small risk, you will be able to earn a huge profit, then that is wrong use of options, wrong use of the tool. Alright? And your losses are imminent. You are likely to lose your premium. And similarly, we have discussed that if you buy the ATM or ITM options, then here you are paying a high premium. Your chances of profit are more due to the high intrinsic value of the option. But if you don't manage your risk by a stop loss or a cover order, then you may lose the entire premium that you have paid. And we said that the stop loss or a cover position is like a helmet while riding a sports bike. It is necessary, but it does not come free of cost. If you don't use that helmet, then again, it is the wrong use of options. So that is what we discussed in the previous lesson. Now we shall talk about the relevance of the second statement. And what was that second statement? That knowledge must be used in a comprehensive and coordinated manner. What does it mean? Now, if you understand this, then that query about whether you should trade options in isolation or not, whether you should trade options without the support of futures or a portfolio, that answer will automatically become clear to you. All right. So now let us try and understand it. Let us say that you want to learn driving a car. So how will you go about learning to drive a car? Logically, if you see, first you will try and understand the general mechanism of the car, isn't it? And then you will learn the safety rules. What are the safety rules that you have to follow? And then you will learn about the accelerator, brakes, clutch and those other things. And then you will learn about the steering control. And all this, whatever you learn, you will try to apply these things in a coordinated manner. All right. All these things work in coordination. And then you will practice on a safe road till you gain some confidence. You will not try to drive in traffic initially until you begin, you gain a lot of confidence. And only then you will get on to a highway and drive in heavy traffic. Isn't it? That is the logical way that you go about. Now come to trading in the stock market. We are not talking about trading only in options, but we are talking about trading in general. All right. You see, understanding options is like understanding how a car accelerator works. That is very, very important, of course. But can you drive a car? just by being an expert on the accelerator mechanism? Obviously not. I don't think you can do that. Similarly, if you want to trade in the stock market, then you need a basic understanding of finance, investment and business. The general understanding you need. You need a comprehensive understanding of how the stock market functions. You need a comprehensive understanding of the futures as well as options and then you should know the technical analysis you should also understand how the futures and options work in a combination and then you need to understand whether you should trade in stocks or whether you should trade in derivatives like futures and options which one is better and why all these things you need to understand 
and once you understand all these things then you will need to trade with your notional money on paper just like practicing driving on a safe isolated road now before you commit your hard earned money like driving on a highway you need to practice with notional money got it and above all you need to understand the risk associated with buying and selling options trading in options is like driving in mountains with a deep valley on one side you have to be very very careful so the question is as the student has asked me can you trade in options in isolation plain naked options without the support of futures or a portfolio and the answer is yes because if you have studied options then it is obvious that you have the basic understanding of the stock market you have the basic understanding of futures technical analysis and other things so you can trade in options in isolation but if you ask me should you trade in options in an isolated manner without the support of futures or options or futures or portfolio then my answer will be a big no why no because managing risk without the support of futures or a portfolio is a very difficult task and it is not very cost effective so while you can trade in options in an isolation it is not advisable for you to do that now let me explain with some examples let us say that a stock is trading at a hundred dollars per share dollars or rupees or ren yen or real whatever don't worry about that don't worry about the currency just try and understand the concept all right so let us say that the stock is trading at 100 and you buy an otm call option at a strike price of 110 that means you are buying a call option otm call option at 10% higher strike price or you are buying a otm put option at 10% lower price by paying a small premium you will have to pay a small premium for this all right but if you are doing that then this is the wrong use of options we have already discussed that why because to gain a profit out of this the price of the underlying asset has to rise or fall by more than 10% that is quite unlikely all right and therefore it is very likely that due to time decay the time decay will eat away your premium and you are very likely to lose your premium if you are trading in otm options or quite out of the money options all right let us come to selling let us say that you sell the otm call option at the same strike price 110 or you sell a otm put option at 90 the same thing here you are a buyer now you are a seller all right and if you are a seller instead of paying the premium you will be taking the small premium got it i hope you are clear about that now if you are doing that then actually wisdom wise this is the right use of options this is something like you know hedging and it is the right use of options the price is unlikely to change more than 10% within a series and you are likely to retain the premium that you have paid though it is a small premium you are very likely to retain that premium but you see nothing can be guaranteed in the stock market what if the price changes sharply if something abnormal happens and if the price changes very sharply let us say from 100 it either goes to 150 or comes down to 50 what will happen you will lose heavily isn't it you are a seller now your losses are unlimited you will become back bankrupt in a day if the price fluctuates so much so what do you do though it is a right thing to do but then you have to manage your risk by having a futures position or a portfolio position we have discussed this we'll not go into those details again 
we have already discussed how you take a position in futures or a portfolio and then you buy or sell options we have discussed that got it now come to buying or selling in the money or at the money options let us say that you buy an atm call option at a strike price of 100 now since the stock is trading at 100 if you buy at the strike price of 100 it will be atm isn't it or if you are buying an atm put option again at the same price here you will get a comparatively large premium or you will have to pay a large premium got it but that is of course a good thing because you know the intrinsic value of your option is high so it is a good thing to do but what if your analysis goes wrong nothing is guaranteed as i said your analysis can go wrong what if the price moves in the opposite direction what you had anticipated in that case you will lose the last premium which you have paid isn't it so again here to manage the risk you need a futures position or a portfolio position or you need to have a stop loss or a counter trade in the same options which again will cost you money may not be very cost effective all right so these are the things you have to consider now come to selling the itm or the atm options here you were a buyer now let us say you are selling a atm call option or you are selling a atm put option and now since you are selling you will be taking a large premium a substantially large premium you will get again a good thing to do if your analysis goes right then you will retain that large premium you will gain substantially but what if your analysis goes wrong see nothing can be guaranteed isn't it something may happen some turmoil may happen your analysis may go wrong what happens then if the price moves sharply in an opposite direction what you had anticipated then you will lose heavily you will be bankrupt in a day isn't it so again here to manage the risk you will need a futures position or some portfolio position you will need so that your losses are offset by having these positions isn't it so therefore while you can trade in naked options it is not advisable for you to do so as a mature person as a mature trader as a knowledgeable trader it is not advisable to trade in naked options got it half knowledge is a dangerous thing please do not do things with half baked knowledge but knowledge cannot be gained in one go it is not like swallowing a capsule with a glass of water and you become knowledgeable it doesn't happen like that knowledge is gained in stages one step at a time an adequate practice before you get on to the next step you have to gain your knowledge in stages slowly you see learning about options in this course you are learning about options and that is a stage in your learning journey a very very important stage of course but that is not the beginning or the end of learning learning about options does not mean that you become an expert in trading it is not like that now the last part of the query which the student has asked he has also asked me that lot many courses are available how should i go about learning in an organized way now if you want to do that this is one of my courses on udemy investment and trading a logical and knowledge based approach a short course about two and a half hours this will explain to you how you should go about learning investment and trading if you want to do it on your own or if you want to take somebody's help this will only guide you a path this is not a course in a true sense this is just a guide it will give you an approach as to how should you go about learning the subject all right so i hope i have been able to answer all the queries in a reasonably simple and clear manner now if you ask me more questions i will try to answer them and our association will continue all right